What's going on guys, it's Trevor with Embers Living. Today, we are settling a debate. What is better for heating your home? Is it gonna be wood as your fuel type or something that's gas? So that's the debate today, wood versus gas. Let's go. All right, don't forget if you're in the Denver, Colorado area, come to our showroom today. You can check out all these products for yourself. Um, also, if you're new to our channel, make sure to subscribe. It helps us out a ton when you guys do that. Follow us on TikTok, all the places. Okay, so it's probably getting close to winter time and you're trying to decide, maybe you have an old drafty fireplace and you wanna do an insert and you're trying to decide if you should run gas to it and do a gas insert or if you should just do a simple wood insert to heat your home and which one's gonna be better. So let's start out with a couple misconceptions and I'm gonna tell you the answer directly is circumstantial. There's so many different circumstances with people's homes and I'm gonna go over some of the circumstances to think about when you're deciding between wood and gas. So the biggest misconception is that wood is more powerful than gas. And the reason that that misconception exists is this wood stove has 400 degrees coming off of it. Uh, it is pumping out a ton of heat into the room. So it has a tremendous amount of heat coming off of it. And the reason that's a misconception is, follow me over here, Chris. The typical gas fireplace that goes in almost every home in America, track home in America, is this guy. It has 87 degrees coming off of it. The problem with gas fireplaces is, is compared to wood stoves, there's so much more variety and gas units don't have the regulations that wood stove has. So basically all wood stoves, for us to sell them, they have to be what's called EPA certified. So everything that we offer is super clean burning, super efficient, super high heat. So as a rule of thumb, because of those regulations, every wood stove is, does a really, really good job heating. Gas fireplaces, however, this is more or less a decorative type fireplace. So you're burning fuel, but not getting any heat out of it. However, gas fireplaces have come a long way. Follow me over here on this fireplace we've had on for a while. So the thing is, is there are very high efficient gas fireplaces out there. So this is a Mendota unit. We're gonna come back and check on it in a minute because I didn't leave it on long enough, but it's at 350 degrees and I promise you it's gonna get hotter than that. This is gonna be in the 80 to 90% efficient for a gas fireplace. So we can achieve the same amount of power coming out of gas or wood. So now let's go talk about the advantages and disadvantages of wood. Okay, so let's start with what's the same between a powerful gas fireplace and a powerful wood fireplace. So they both predominantly heat as zone heating. So what zone heating means is it's really gonna predominantly heat the space it's in and then slowly disperse heat to other parts of the house. So in general, your bedrooms are gonna run colder, things like that, which is usually okay because we want our bedroom colder and we want the warmest place the most amount of time that we spend time in. So they're gonna heat radiantly and both units, gas and wood, you can usually put a blower on them and get some convection heat coming off of both units. So that's what's the same about them. Okay, so what are the advantages to wood? Well, of course, a major advantage is gonna be that you're completely off the grid. So you're not dependent on any power supply companies, you're not dependent on any natural gas supply, you're not dependent on anybody filling up propane. Doesn't really matter what you have, as long as you have wood, you can heat your house. So you definitely are off the grid, which a lot of people find as a major benefit. Okay, another benefit to wood is gonna be usually cost to operate. So this is where I'm talking about circumstantial. If you live in an area or on property where you have access to free wood, you know, you're chopping down your own trees, you're storing and splitting your own wood. Uh, that's obviously for, for you personally, that's a huge benefit because you're not paying for fuel. So in that case, I would definitely lean more heavily towards wood um, just for fuel costs alone. I mean, that's pretty, pretty easy one. The other thing, the other benefit to wood is going to be, even if you're paying for cords of wood, typical cost of cord, cords of hardwood in, between, in the United States between 300 and 700 bucks. Depending on how big your house is, how efficient your house is, you may go through two cords of wood, maybe three, like if, if it's your primary heat source. 
So you're spending 1500 bucks a winter or so. Um, it's still not terrible. I mean, it's not cheap, but it's not terrible, but it's obviously better if you have access to your own wood. Another advantage is, is the aesthetic. Now, again, I don't think you can really replicate the aesthetic appeal of a real wood fireplace. It obviously looks real because it is real. <laughs> so it smells good, it looks real, it gives you nice powerful heat and fuel costs aren't that expensive and uh, you're off the grid, completely off the grid. So those are some of the advantages to burning with wood. All right, let's talk disadvantages. Here's the disadvantages to wood. We talked about it being real fire, okay? Um, some people are sensitive to, uh, you know, have asthma or they're, they have allergies towards the wood burning smoke. Obviously, this is where I'm talking about circumstantial. If it's something that bothers you, then that could be a major downfall to not go with wood. Other thing with wood is they're definitely more difficult to install. So usually the piping system is more complicated. I went through a pipe system yesterday and I drew this beautiful little chart here on how you need to vent a wood stove, but essentially all wood products have to go terminate vertically. So through a roof uh, or above the peak, uh, even if you're doing an insert form. So if you don't have an option to terminate vertically, it's gonna be too difficult for you to install. So um, that would be an advantage to gas, which I'll talk about in, uh, later, but installs can be a little bit trickier. Things like televisions, uh, incorporating them into a wall with like shiplap, things like that. It's harder to do and the wall's gonna soot up. So it's gonna be dirtier and messier. Another disadvantage to wood, like I said, let's say you have access to free wood. Well, guess what that means for you? Storing, splitting, stacking, seasoning. So it involves more work. Now, even if you're paying for cords of wood, you usually have to go pick it up. You still have to store it. You still have to stack it. So it, wood generally is gonna rob you of some time. It's gonna take you more time. But some people, as I mentioned, is circumstantial. They like it. They like doing it. You know, it, they, it's something that they enjoy. They like being hands-on. Another disadvantage is if you have a busy schedule, um, you know, and let's say you have a cold firebox in the morning, it's gonna take you a good 30, 45 minutes to really get it going and get some good heat output off of it. So it's gonna be more time consuming to get it going. And if you don't have that much time in the morning, you're not really gonna to get to enjoy so much the ambiance of the wood burning fireplace. So as you can see, there's, there's advantages and disadvantages to it. Another uh, major thing I didn't talk about, which I forgot to mention, is the most expensive fuel costs out there uh, besides like all electric is if you are burning propane. So if you have an all propane house, um, you know the cost of propane. So propane insert really doesn't make a lot of sense if you're worried about fuel costs because wood is significantly cheaper than propane. It's really close when it comes to natural gas if you're buying cords of wood, but if you're worried about fuel costs and you're on propane, definitely look at uh, a solid fuel like a wood or a pellet stove. Okay, another problem, another negative to wood, and this kind of talks about the venting system I was talking about, is one, you're gonna spend more on the venting, but two, um, if you wanna watch this video I did on how a vent system works, I go in a lot more in depth, but essentially if you view your home as an envelope system with balanced you know, air pressure throughout the home, a wood stove disrupts that because it's pulling room air for oxygen right, for the wood to burn. Now you can do things like an outside air kit, things like that, but you're still gonna need to establish a draft through the venting system. So it's a little bit more disruptive uh, when it comes to balancing the, the air pressure within a home with wood. Whereas a gas, I'll get into the benefits of that when we talk about gas. All right, let's go over to gas and talk about gas. Okay, so this guy's been on for a little bit longer. So the heat output coming off of gas we're over 500 degrees, so that's really good. So you can see it's just as powerful. Like you are, you're not gonna, have, if you have buy a good one, you're not gonna have any problem heating your home with gas. You can use it as a primary heat source just like you could with a wood burning fireplace. Okay, let's talk about some of the disadvantages with gas. So one of the pros to wood was we're completely off the grid. With gas, you can be almost off of the grid. So all these gas units 
do have battery backup. So what's cool about them is they don't require power. So you can burn them in a power outage or use them in a power outage to heat your home, but you are still dependent on the, either the natural gas supply or your propane supply. So if you got loads of propane sitting around in tanks, you're kind of off the grid for a while. So it's close, but you're not completely off the grid with gas. The other thing is this would apply if you have access to free wood, you're gonna spend more uh, on your fuel source, especially on propane. Propane is a huge negative. So I don't ever recommend someone get a gas unit. The only way I do propane on a, heat, on a primary heat source is if you don't really care about utility costs and you just care about convenience and or if you're allergic and you're sensitive to allergies or whatever when it comes to wood that's the only way i would do um, gas propane gas i should say not natural gas that's really about it as the negatives and again this is more subjective i think this one looks very realistic but of course you're not going to get the crackling you're not going to get the sounds you're not going to get the smell like you would with a wood burning fireplace and maybe not quite as authentic i think this one looks real do you think chris Good. But you, you're partial to wood. You don't think anything looks as good as the real thing, right? <laughs> that's true. That's true. Okay, so that's some of the disadvantages with gas. Now, what are some of the advantages? Well, you can see tremendous amount of heat output coming off of this. Now, let's talk install. Gas fireplaces, if this is your home again, Tate's going to kill me. I'm just drawing all over this showroom. So, if this is your home, and you're installing, let's say this is your basement. This is your main level, okay? You can put a gas fireplace here, vent it out right here, out the side of a house, boom, you're done. Gas fireplaces are stinking awesome for basements because same thing, you can vent it out a basement and not have to worry about it. If you wanted to do a wood stove in the basement, we gotta go all the way up here. So you're gonna spend less on gas uh, to get it installed and vented. And you usually have a lot more flexibility when it comes to the installs. Now remember with wood, I talked about the envelope of the home and balancing the home. Okay, so here's another huge advantage with gas when it comes to fixing the imbalance of pressure within the home. So wood stoves, like we said, rob room air, even with an outside air kit, they still disrupt the, the pressure of the envelope of the home gas runs completely independent of what your house is doing and that's through a direct vent system so what that means is it's using one pipe to pull air from outside the house and then it's using the other pipe to exhaust so we really have zero limitations on what we can do with gas because remember we're pulling air from the outside for combustion for it to burn okay and then the other one is sending the exhaust outside the house. So it keeps your home, let's say you have an HVAC system or something, it's not gonna mess with your HVAC at all, except for affecting the temperature of the room, but it's not doing anything with the pressure of the home. So it's just more convenient and less to worry about with gas when it comes to that standpoint. And the other advantage is you're not robbing, let's say you have an HVAC system, you're not robbing all the fresh air, because with wood, you could be paying your HVAC to run and then it's that wood stove is just sucking all the air you paid to heat the home with into the wood stove and out. Although it's putting more heat back in, but still, it's still robbing your room air. This is com running completely independent from the envelope of the home, which is a huge advantage with gas. Now, sticking on the topic of insulation, another huge advantage is we can do a lot more with installation because we can vent it out a sidewall we can go up through a roof we can put them in basements we can put them in bedrooms uh, but on top of that we can do a lot more cool stuff so if you come over here with the developments we've had in technology we can put a cool wall system on a fireplace so we can get a tv tight to a fireplace uh, this would be an example of like a cool wall kit on a fireplace so it's dispersing some of the heat up and around the wall and then coming out the top vent above a fireplace. So your, your wall will stay cool to the touch, which allows us to do like shiplap or wood or wood mantles. While we're still utilizing the heat of the fireplace, um, we can do a lot more creativity when it comes to the install of the fireplace and a lot more variety. So we can go long, skinny, contemporary heaters. We can go traditional, you know, traditional log set type heaters. 
So we have a lot more aesthetic options and a ton more flexibility when it comes to installation. Okay, let's talk fuel costs. So propane, as I mentioned, you're gonna skyrocket. I think you'd be hard pressed to spend 12 to 1500 bucks in a winter on natural gas. So I don't have the exact calculations, uh, but you're not gonna spend that much. You're gonna be probably pretty close to cord, cord wood. Um, so fuel costs, I think, would be inconsequential, again, unless you're getting free wood. So I wouldn't really base your decision on fuel costs if you're on natural gas. But now let's talk uh, convenience. Obviously, it goes without saying that this is going to be way more convenient. So for me, what I was talking about in the morning, I only have about 30 minutes or so to drink my coffee. So this can be on a thermostat or a remote control. When I wake up in the morning, I just press a button and it fires on. What else is really cool is gas is gonna give us more flexibility with the amount of heat coming off. So with wood, once that firebox is full, it's gonna do what it's gonna do. Like it's just gonna heat until it heats you out of there. So with wood, we have less flexibility with controlling the ambient temperature of the room. The wood stove is just gonna do what it's gonna do. It does have some air controls on it and you can tamper it down a little bit but you're gonna see a lot more fluctuation within the temperature of the home. With gas, just like a furnace, I can put it in a thermostat mode. So I could set my thermostat, you see it just shut off. Now, if I wanted to set it to 79, it's gonna to go to 79 degrees, so it should kick back on here in a second because it realizes it hasn't reached room temperature. Now, what else is really cool with this is I can put this remote anywhere I want and uh, it's gonna be reading the temperature. So my temperature, my thermostat isn't fixed on a wall somewhere. Now, again, going back to fuel costs, this is why I don't think you can really measure fuel costs, you know, quite apples to apples. What else you can do with this guy, let's say you have a super efficient one like this Mendota, I can shut off the rear burner entirely. So now I've cut the amount of fuel consumption in half, okay? Then I can go down and turn the front burner down another 50%. So really I've, I've cut off 75% of my fuel consumption. Kind of like a wood stove. As a stove, wood stove dies down, it's still gonna be giving off quite a bit of heat. And so this can kind of do the same thing. So you're not really burning a lot of fuel, especially compared to like a furnace or something. It's a lot more efficient than a furnace, which is a separate video by the way. So we have flexibility with how much heat we want coming off of this fireplace and that can be more instantaneous. So to me, it provides a more stable comfort environment within the area that you're spending the most time. Obviously you don't have to worry about allergies. It is a completely sealed system. You're not gonna worry about odors. You're not gonna worry about smoke or soot on the wall. So to me, which one would I choose? Again, it's lifestyle and circumstantial. For me, I live in town. I have access to natural gas. I don't have access to free wood. Uh, and I have a busy schedule running a business. So I don't have a lot of time to store, stack wood, set, sit in front of the fire in the morning. I only have about 30 minutes. So for me personally, uh, I love having gas fireplaces. I have two of them. I have one in my basement that I use to supplement the basement heat because the basement's always colder and it's of course easy to vent. And then I have one on the main level as well uh, to sort of help supplement the heat. And I primarily heat with gas fireplaces. I really don't use my furnace at all. And I just love the convenience. I can put it in thermostat mode. I can start the coffee, pop it on. By the time the coffee's done, it's already nice and hot and I can sit and enjoy it for 20 minutes and then get going with my day. So for me, gas is an easy choice. Now, if you're out in the woods with piles of free wood and you're on propane, for you, maybe, wood is an easy choice. I wanna know in the comments section because I'm kind of curious what most of the country's doing. What do you choose and what do you prefer? That's just my opinion. Again, there's a lot of variety and room for opinions. And if your opinion's different, you don't have to be hateful about it. Just let us know in the comments section. There's a ton of room for variety. We'll see you guys next time. Don't forget if you're in the Denver, Colorado area, come to our showroom today.